And today we will be doing some fun stuff. First of all, we're going to be doing my second ever open lobby in Mortal Kombat 11. And uh, we're going to be doing it a little differently. Last week when I first did this, okay, because I didn't understand how the lobby system worked, um, I wanted to play with my, my buddies Brian and Kekin and try out, you know, various characters and see how the online connectivity was and how the lobby system, you know, functioned in the game because I had never used it before. So the first half of my stream last week, we basically had set up a lobby just for us and played against each other for like, you know, an hour to two hours. And then uh, after that, I switched the stream over to be more open and we had people from the outside who were, uh, you know, joining us. Well, uh, this week we're going to be doing it as an open lobby from the start. It will be myself, Brian, and Kekin in the lobby, but there will be other people we'll be inviting in as well. Um, you know, we'll be attempting to set this up so that it works uh, just like it did last week. You know, getting people in there. And, uh, you know, we will more than likely rotate, meaning it's not going to be the same people the whole time. <clears throat> more than likely what we'll try to do is get, um, you know, different... different uh, What's the word I'm looking for? Shifts? I know that sounds weird, but different rotations of people. So maybe we'll have like five people in there for like a half an hour to 45 minutes, maybe a little longer, and then we rotate out to another group. Because I know there's a, a few groups of people who are looking to play uh, who have been expressed over the past week their desire to play against us uh, today. Okay. Now we're going to see. We're going to see how it goes. Um, and, and go from there. If this stream ends up being fun and entertaining... And, you know, their support, and people want to see this kind of thing again, then maybe we would do it as a regular thing, because we already had discussed, you know, a weekly thing with myself, Brian, and Kekin, since we're not doing Apex Legends anymore, since the hype for that died out, and really there's no reason to play it with no new content or anything in it. Um, you know, I'm considering doing something else. However, if it ends up being kind of a slow stream, and people don't really like it that much, they prefer to see me play Mortal Kombat... Uh, you know, as a new, play a new character and go online in random ranked matches and stuff like that, then maybe I'll just keep doing it that way. I don't know. I don't know how things are going to go here, okay? Um, you know, we'll play, it, we'll play it by ear. We'll see how the stream goes and feel it out. Uh, I, I'm not against playing Mortal Kombat as like a weekly open lobby challenge thing. Um, you know, I'm not very good at it, and I know I'm not going to win a ton. But at the same time, uh, if it ends up being like, well, we only get a small group of people who really care... And it ends up not being a very popular thing where, you know, this is kind of a dead stream. Then I'm not, I'm not going to be doing it regularly. You know what I mean? Uh, I mean? I'll be honest with all of you. It's very hard for me to interact with the stream viewers during fighting game streams when I'm constantly playing. Now, the thing is, with an open lobby stream like today, I won't be constantly playing. I'll actually have the opportunity um, to interact with you guys a little bit more because other people will be playing. And when they are, you know, be able to react to, to not only what they're doing in their games, but if you guys are talking and want to want to chat about stuff, I should have, um, you know, some more opportunity to kind of, you know, you know, have some conversation and stuff. So we'll see how today goes. Again, you know, I'm totally just trying something new. You know, last week we kind of did this, but not for too long because we didn't have much time uh, after trying to figure out how the lobby system worked. And quite frankly, I do not like how the lobbies are in Mortal Kombat 11. They should be a lot better, in my opinion. Uh, how you cannot set up a private lobby with a password protection like you could do in every other fighting game, I have no idea. Um, having to manually uh, add people to your friends list in order to get them in is just ridiculous. It really is. It's absolutely ridiculous. So, we'll see how it goes today, okay? Um, Alright, so tonight... My late stream tonight is going to be Phoenix Wright Trials and Tribulations. All right, Phoenix Wright Trials and Tribulations. Now, this should be fun because it's an ongoing narrative playthrough I've been doing where I do voice acting and it's an ongoing visual novel murder mystery slash uh, courtroom drama. And I uh, have just entered the third chapter slash third case and we're just in the intro segment of it. We don't know too much about it besides the fact that apparently someone was impersonating Phoenix Wright in a court case. He failed or lost the case and it became like big news and it made him look bad. And I was like, well, wait a minute. I wasn't involved in that case. What the hell's going on? All right. So that should be interesting tonight to do about two more hours of that. Tomorrow, I, I've decided I am going to do more Days Gone tomorrow 
Because apparently from what people are saying, I am nearing the end of the game. Like maybe another one to two sessions and I may actually wrap up Days Gone completely. Which would actually be good in my opinion because it would allow me to focus in on the new releases coming out. There's a big one coming out this week um, in particular. And so I wouldn't want Days Gone to be lingering as a playthrough for like, you know, another two, three weeks when uh, I got another game coming out that everyone's going to want to see. Okay? So that being said... Uh, tomorrow I'm going to play more Days Gone, four more hours of Days Gone, um, and we'll see how, how close we can get, you know, again, I'm being told one, two sessions, I'm, I'm done with it, so, that's good, and you know, the plot's been great, the plot really picked up in yesterday's session, I mean, holy crap, there was a few t twists there that I did not see coming, um, to, <clears throat> so, yes, folks, um, yes, folks, should be fun. Tomorrow night, we will, you know, go back to the, the late night chill streaming rotation continuing on. And so tomorrow night will be a session of Minecraft. Okay? Um, that should be good. You know, last time that we played Minecraft, I went to one of the new villages. I fought some pillagers. Sadly, things didn't work out how I wanted. Because, sadly, um, the villagers all killed themselves. <laughs> yeah. So I need to go back to the other village that I'm aware of that exists on my, my, my world. And what I'm going to do is try to build the, the job tables and the like, the things you need for the villagers to actually start doing significant progress. Um, and seeing if I can start to farm from these villagers, uh, you know, emeralds and then using those emeralds to buy other things that I need, etc., etc. So I'm going to be working on that Monday night. And then Tuesday is the big new release, guys. Excuse me, that was uh, Sunday night. Monday is going to be Mortal Kombat 11, uh, a new character. I'll pick a new character who I haven't used yet. I'll try them out in training mode and then online play, etc. And then Monday night, I'll probably be swinging back to my MLB chill streaming stuff, okay? MLB session. So then on Tuesday is the big new release of this week, Rage 2 from id Software. I'm excited to give it a look. I'm excited to try it out. I liked the last you know, few major games from id Software, including the Doom uh, you know, reboot as well as some of the Wolfenstein games that I've played, okay? So, um, should be great. It should. It should be great. And uh, it should be a good week coming up, you know, f you know, continuing on and finishing up with Days Gone eventually. Some Mortal Kombat 11 coverage for you. New chill streaming and then Rage 2 starting on Tuesday. So, FYI, I will be here every day um, through... Friday. Friday coming up will be my day off for the week. So, you know, another six straight days of streaming uh, for all of you. Usually I take a day off earlier than that, but this week it's going to be a little bit on the later side. So it's going to be more streaming than usual before I take my break uh, this week. Okay. Fair enough. Okay. All right, guys. So that's the schedule. And, uh, you know, hope all of you are doing well, having a good weekend. Ready to chill with me this weekend with some fun gameplay. Um, basically, folks, we are back to normal, which is good. Um, that's exactly what I wanted. I didn't want any kind of uh, extended drama. I didn't want any kind of extended attention uh, when it came to any kinds of things going down on the internet. As you know, it was a little bit of drama. When I say a little bit, I mean like 17,000 you know, liking of t tweets and stuff like that. Um, the bottom line is this, guys. I'm not a guy that's all about drama. I never have been. I never will be. I don't like it. Um, every once in a while, if I find the need to become involved in something for various reasons, I will. But for the most part, I stand outside of everything going on with all the people who insult me over the years and everything. Even though I don't even know who the hell they are, I just stay on the outside or whatever. Uh, you know, two days ago, I felt the need to interject myself quickly into a situation and exit. It's hilarious with all the crap. <clears throat> that people have said in general, most people are supportive of, of, you know, me at this point, which is hilarious because it's funny how public opinion changes so quickly. Um, when for seven years I was the butt of everyone's internet joke. And now with two tweets, I basically somehow redeemed myself, figure that one out. I don't know. You figure it out. I don't, I, I really don't know. And I don't care. Um, for me, I just want to be here every day, putting out fun gameplay streams for you guys and make a living doing it. And as long as I can keep doing that, I don't care less what happens outside of everything else. That's how I've always been. I've been in my own bubble. Um, but yeah, um, don't worry about it. You know, as you guys know, here on the streams, things are going to be fine. No, you know, we're not going to be constantly talking about drama. 
Um, we're not going to be focusing in on this kind of stuff at all. Um, I just want to kind of dismiss that because I want people to understand. Oh my God, is that it? Is that now Phil is constantly going to be drama, drama without no? Um, you guys know me. You know what kind of content I put out there. You know, just because I tweeted a couple things two days ago doesn't mean this is what it's going to become every day uh, or anything like that. You know, even though there's an insanely huge group of people, as we've seen on Twitter for the past two days, there's an insanely huge group of people who love the drama and all they want to do is you know, jump in on it. Um, you know, I'm not going to do that here on my streams. That's not what this is about. It's not at all. It's not what these streams are about. Um, I'm here to have a chill, fun gameplay experience with all of you. And to basically just have a good time and, you know, like I said, to hopefully make a living doing it while I'm doing it, which is pretty neat that I'm able to even do that. And now I've been doing it for, you know, shit. I've been doing it since 2011, so eight years of my life that I've been able to make a living doing it. Pretty neat, right? Um, so no worries. Yesterday, a lot of people expressed concern. Oh, my God. See, Phil shouldn't have ever spoken up and said a single word about anything because now everything will just constantly be drama. Uh, no, it will not be at all. Um, no worries. No, you know, it's not going to be that at all. Uh, just quite the contrary. Um, it's just going to be me doing my normal stuff. Okay. <clears throat> I tweeted about for 12 hours. Really? You think I tweeted for 12 hours straight? Did I now? <laughs> uh, last night I barely even tweeted anything about anything. I tweeted about, um, a Rage 2 plugin that's going to be, not plugin, excuse me, an extension. That apparently when I play Rage 2, people who are watching the stream will be able to like click the, the screen and revive me automatically or something. I don't know how that's going to work, but that seems interesting. And I tweeted about Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 coming out next year. Uh, next year. Next summer is what I meant to say. And I'm looking for co-op partners for that. Um, and then I uh, tweeted once and basically said, well, you know, the whole Pro Jared thing is, has drawn itself out. But just a you know fair warning to all these bigger you guys who have punched down on me for years. You know, I know how to bide my time, and I'll be keeping an eye on you, and we'll see what happens. <laughs> you know, because it's like I said yesterday on the pre-stream, I fully expect that this is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to these guys, that they're basically going to be doing things um, that are they're going to get exposed for, and the whole thing's going to blow up all over the internet. Um, and when it does, when these things blow up all over the internet, um, you know, it's going to bite them in the butt. And, you know, a lot of these guys, sadly, I hate to say, have insulted me over the years. So, don't be surprised if every once in a while, when all of a sudden they get exposed for stuff, that a tweet comes out for me, you know? But that's going to really be the extent of it, you know? I'm not going to be doing any kind of thing on my, in my content or whatever that has anything to do with it. Uh, I would much rather just play games and have fun and not make it all about that. I don't, you know, you guys are the regulars. You come in here, you, you're here to, to just chill out and relax and have a good time with me. And that's kind of the deal. That's That's what I want. So... No worries. I won't be, uh, I really won't be, you know, doing this kind of stuff. It was funny because a few years ago, people wanted me to do drama content, right? Remember uh, when people asked me to diversify on my three channels and so on, the King of Hate vlogs, I did a few videos that was like kind of like that. And I'll be honest, they got views too, which is stupid as hell in my opinion. They did. They got good views. But I said, I really want to do this kind of content in the long term. You know, I don't. Um, so, it is what it is. <laughs> okay, so folks, um, I guess it is now time to get to the plugs. Alright, we'll do some quick plugs, and then we'll get to shout outs, and then we'll continue. Alright, alright, so, thank you guys very much for all of your support. As you know, I've been a content creator for almost 11 full years now, and enjoyed every minute of it. There have certainly been ups and downs, and I've certainly had to change the way that I do things multiple times in order to adjust for the times and or adjust for things like YouTube, completely falling out from the bottom and basically not being able to, to make it viable for me to do YouTube for a living anymore, okay? All that being said, I solely rely on your crowdfunded support in order to keep things going around here, you know? If you love my daily live streams and you love... My on-demand content on the, my DSP Gaming channel on YouTube, which just serves as an archive of these daily streams. All right? And you want to see this continue. You have fun with it, and you want to see it all continue. All right? There are many ways that you can actually support my efforts to keep going. All right? Now, I have a Patreon at patreon.com forward slash darksidephil, where you can earn personal perks for your contributions. Give it a look. 
I also have a Teespring store at teespring.com forward slash stores forward slash DSP Gaming where you can buy merchandise. That is all, you know, Dark Side Phil themed merchandise and stuff like that, okay? Um, all kinds of good stuff. But in general, if you're here on the live stream right now, more than likely, if you're looking to contribute, you want to get a live shout out for your contribution, and therefore you're probably going to be looking to either cheer, sub, or tip during today's stream so that I can give you a shout out, right? So that's great. And if you do any of those three things, I indeed, I will give you a live shout out during the stream. Keep in mind, if I'm in the midst of a set of games, you know, obviously that's not when I'm going to give you the shout out. I'll try to, you know, do it between rounds or for a time when I'm not playing, because as you know, this will be an open lobby, and I'm certainly not great at this game, so I'm going to be losing a bunch. And I'll be waiting for my next match and commentating over other people's matches. So during that time period, I'll have ample opportunity to give you guys shout-outs and, uh, you know, commentary and, and have interactions with you. Okay? That's great. Now, a few things. As you can see, we have a monthly subs goal this month of 500 subs. We're currently at 464, which is great. So thanks to everyone who has been supportive so far this month. If we get another 36 subs to top it off at 500 for this month... I will be doing a special retrospective event. This event I've done before and people have really enjoyed. This is an event where I go back and I reminisce on all the stuff from my past. You know, we can look at things like old game playthroughs, old streams, game reviews, vlogs, ongoing series, you know, travel videos, all kinds of stuff. And <clears throat> the last three times I did this event, it was highly, highly successful. People really enjoyed it and came out in droves to just kind of take a walk down memory lane. So I'd love to do it again, but we have to hit 500 uh, subs in order to do it, um, you know, for this month. So, that being said, please consider subscribing to my channel here on Twitch. What do you get for subscribing? Well, you get many things, including over 30 emotes. That's right. We have over 30 emote spots, um, you know, that can be used, you know, here or on other streams. You do not have to watch advertisements when I run them during ad breaks. And also, you get a cool chat crown badge to show how long you've been a, a supporter, Okay. Excuse me. I felt that one coming. By the way, I should I should mention, I'm drinking a Mountain Dew Kickstart today. It's the first time I've had a Mountain Dew Kickstart in weeks. So I may be a little bit burpy today, and I apologize for that. I'll tell you, I'll just warn you in advance. Ah. All right. All right, guys. Um, So, yes, please consider subscribing. All right. If you're the top cheerer or the top tipper of the of the day here on the stream, I'm going to go ahead and put you up on my leaderboard at the top of the screen so that you get extra recognition during the live stream. All right. Now, in particular, guys, if you really want to help me out the most, please tip me during today's stream. All right. Right now, I'm in a current situation where I basically have no money. And all the tips you guys have been giving me the past few days literally goes right to the bank account and pays bills. That's exactly what happened yesterday. You know, some people came out, were very supportive. And that money went straight to bills. So thank you for that, guys. Please, if you want to help me the most today, please tip me. There's two ways that you can do so. Below the stream, there's a tips jar button that you can click on. Or if you don't see the tips jar button, you can type exclamation point and then tip into the stream chat. That will bring up a command. All right. And that command allows you to click on a link to go to my PayPal tips page. A few things about tipping me via, via this PayPal tips page. First of all, you can either leave your name in a message if you would like a full shout out for full credit on stream, or you could do it completely anonymously by just making up a fake name or putting in, you know, a non or whatever you want to do. Um, a lot of people are nervous about doing contrib contributions over the internet because they say, oh no, what if someone gets finds out who I am or whatever? You could be anonymous. No one's going to find out who you are. Okay. Number two, you do not need a PayPal account to tip me. You can actually do it with a debit or credit card. There's a, a button right there on the PayPal tips page to do it that way. That way, you know, you don't have to worry again. You don't have to worry about having your identity or whatever. You don't have to create an account and go through this big convoluted process. It's very simple. Okay? So there you go. Um, so, yeah, please. Today, guys, the best way to support is tipping me. And I do appreciate any contributions. Don't get me wrong. You know, cheering and subbing and tipping are all great. But tipping me is going to help me the most in the short term. Um, I'm literally counting every single day until I get paid by Twitch this coming week because whew, things are not good. I just, again, I don't want to bring up my personal shit anymore on stream if I can avoid it because there's no point. You guys don't need to know every little thing going on behind the scenes with me. You just don't. Um, but, you know, if you want to help the most, that's the way you can do it by tipping me. Okay. All right. Now it's time to get to shout outs, guys. Let's get to shout outs here uh, for those who have contributed. All right. Um, 
First of all, I unlock. Oh my goodness. Let's go ahead and try to unlock this. Sorry, I, I have a very, very old laptop. <laughs> the, the laptop, I believe I bought this laptop, what was it? 2012? Something like that. And I've used it every day since then. So it can be very slow. Okay, I just got it unlocked. So first of all, it looks like overnight, we had some support from Golden Colts who did many different cheers. First of all, he said, Happy Catter Day. And then one of his cheers, he said, Also, today is the last day to buy gifts for Mother's Day pro tip. Yes, if you live in the United States, uh, tomorrow, Sunday, which would be the 12th of May, is Mother's Day. So, FYI, big thank you, Golden Colts, for reminding all of us. You might want to swing by and get a card or some flowers or something for your mother. No idea what your mother likes. But if your mother is still with us and you love her and you want to say thank you, do something nice for your mom on Mother's Day, okay? I personally have already sent my mom a card and I'll be giving her a call uh, to wish her a happy Mother's Day, uh, you know, tomorrow on the day. So, very nice. So, thank you. To Golden Colts for all those overnight cheers. Those are much appreciated. Then, starting up when, when the stream started here, uh, we had an, an anonymous dollar tip came in. And they said, I don't know if you've heard about this, but as a U.S. senator just introduced a bill to ban loot boxes and microtransactions in video games. Yes, this is interesting. To say the least, I have no idea how this is going to go over um, in the United States government at all. Because really what's going to happen is it's going to depend on actual knowledge and awareness of the United States uh, Senate regarding video game microtransactions. Now, we, as gamers, have been talking about this for years. We've been talking about how it seems that every single freaking game now has a crazy amount of, after the fact, microtransactions, some of which don't really affect anything. You know, you can debate it, but you'd look at a game like Overwatch, right? where it's had microtransactions since day one, but they're all cosmetic. It's just for fancy-looking things on your character or a voice line or an icon, right? It doesn't change the state of gameplay whatsoever to have those things. I mean, yeah, maybe it gives you bragging rights because you have a rare skin or whatever, but it doesn't necessarily change the game at all. It just allows you to, to look a little different during your gameplay, okay? Um... But then you've got games that definitively microtransactions completely change the gameplay experience. First of all, one of the biggest offenders from a couple of years ago um, was, uh, what was it, Mordor Shadow of War, the, the Lord of the Rings game, where you got to a point in the game where you had to recruit orc armies, and you literally would have to grind for like 20 to 30 hours to do it manually, or you could buy microtransactions in the game to just buy those orc dudes outright. Um, at a high enough level that they'd be able to join your, your your army and immediately start wrecking stuff. And it would save you a significant amount of time of progress in the game. All right. Um, now, that's just, the, like I said, that's the tip of the iceberg here because when you really want to talk about microtransactions, you want to go into <clears throat> MMOs and you want to talk about mobile gaming because holy freaking shit, mobile gaming really knows how to pile on the microtransactions and create an almost gambling-like atmosphere. And what I mean by that is, and this is no exaggeration, because I used to play games that were like this. Oh, there's a new event in this mobile game today, but the only way to participate in the event is to have a, a certain character who just released today. You can't earn the character. There's no way to legitimately earn that character. What you need to do is one of two things. You either buy passes to participate in this special event with real-life money... And then you use your existing characters in the game to try to earn shards or 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 cards or summon stones or whatever it is. In every game, it's something different, but it's all the same premise. You have to chip away at earning this character by sp spending money through microtransactions. Or the other way is you can buy a chance at a loot pull. In some games, they call it a multi-summon. In some games, they call it a chest opening. In some games, they call it recruitment, whatever they call it, all right? You spend real-life money to buy, I don't know, 20 pulls on a randomized loot box, and you don't know what you're getting. You could get 20 characters that are amazing, top-of-the-line get characters that completely change the game, and now you're dominating because you have the best ones, or you could end up getting 20 pieces of crap. It's gambling at its finest. I mean, that's exactly what it is. Now, the difference here between actual gambling and, like, a casino 
versus microtransactions in video games is that when you gamble at a casino, your wor winnings are actual cash and prizes that have monetary value. When you do this in a video game, there's zero monetary value associated with anything in that game. It's a virtual game. At any time, they can just turn the game off and you've lost everything you've ever invested in that game. It was all virtual and never really had any intrinsic value whatsoever. You see what I'm saying? There's no way that, for example, if you buy that very high-level character because you got the good, oh, I got the randomized pull, I lucked out, and I got the high-level character, you can't sell that to someone else. There's no monetary value. You can't transfer characters or items between video games like that. So, in reality, is it really gambling in the, in the, the same way that, say, gambling at a casino where you're going to win cash or prizes is? No, but at the same time, it's just as addictive, all right? And what this new bill being proposed by the U.S. Senator says basically is that these microtransactions slash randomized loot boxes are incredibly addictive and are actually luring children, not, not adults, but luring children into an addictive atmosphere that they should not be lured into or presented into. And it's basically not, not necessarily corrupting youth, but it's fooling them into spending repeated amounts of money. Okay? So I guess even though... Even though you could even argue that games like Fortnite or Overwatch, they only have cosmetic appearance uh, gear that, that you, you buy with money, you could still argue, well, the bottom line is it's randomized. And as long as there's a randomized loot box or a randomized thing, that's gambling. You're rolling the dice hoping you get what you want. And if you don't get it, you're teased to buy again to try to get what you want. You see what I mean? Um, so... The difference here is, I mean, let's say, for example, if there's a game and, oh, it costs this amount of money to get this outfit, period. That's not what this bill is saying is wrong. It's not saying all microtransactions are wrong. It's just basically saying randomized microtransactions like loot boxes are wrong and, ga and considered gambling. Now, in Europe, there's already been one country, and I please forgive me because I have forgotten which one it is, but there was one major country that banned these kind of randomized loot boxes. And already some game companies are getting in trouble because they did not change their games in that country. So the country is outright banning certain video games. Um, is it Belgium? People in stream chat are saying Belgium. Okay, it was Belgium that banned it already. So, I mean, if the U.S. does it, I mean, that's huge. The United States is a ginormous market for games. And can you imagine if especially certain mobile games that depend on these randomized loot boxes to make their profits all of a sudden overnight cannot do it anymore? They could go out of business or they could have to completely change up their business model to the point where their entire game is changed. Um, for me, when it comes to, obviously, you know what I do for a living, this will not affect me in the least because, as you guys know, I don't play these kind of games. I play more mainstream, completed video games. I'm not really playing games that have tons of these crazy randomized microtransactions or anything like that. Um, I know for a fact there are streamers out there that this is the kind of stuff they do play, okay? Um, and it might affect them hugely. What if the games go out of business? What if the games have to completely change their business model to somehow now find a way to be profitable without these randomized stuff, okay? Proper Pangolin just said, pay to win bad, but buying random cosmetic items for money to support a game that you enjoy because you can spare $20, good. I completely agree with him, or 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 her. Excuse me. I shouldn't assume gender. One hundred percent, I agree there. I'm not okay with it if it's cosmetic. It doesn't affect the gameplay, and you want to throw something at a game because it was a good game, and you think that they deserve a little bit more money. Especially if it's a game like Overwatch that constantly gives you free content updates. Or, or hell, I'll even say it. Fortnite. They have tons of new seasons, new content that comes out for free. You don't have to pay for any of it. And then you want to throw some more money at the game. There's nothing wrong with that, right? That's fine. But I agree that these games that are pay to win, again, the mobile gaming market, it's tough, man. It's a slippery slope because how many people out there get addicted to it? And now this is a game that you play daily. Maybe it's a game that you play to relax. It's a game that in your free time, it's mindless. It's just clicking a screen. But now you can't participate in certain events because you need new characters. So now you say, oh, I'll just spend a dollar here. I'll spend five dollars here. Oh, I didn't get the character. Oh, all right, I could do another five dollars. All right. Man, all right, well, hold on. There's a multi-pull option for $50, and then I get a couple extra pulls. So, yeah, see what I mean? And this is how it begins, exactly how it begins. And the next thing you know, you've dumped so much money into these games. And you're like, damn, what the hell did I do? But now you're invested. 
Now you've already invested so much money in this game. Well, I, I better spend more later on to keep going because I already did. This is kind of my game now, right? And now you even even if you you end up not liking the game in the long run, you keep playing it because you already spent so much money on it. You feel invested and like you'd be throwing that money away if you stopped playing it. There's this is it's crazy. I understand all of this because I've been you know in the past I used to play games like that and. I completely abandoned them all because I said, I can't do this. This is nuts. Spending money on this shit is crazy, you know? But there's people out there who are getting themselves into big trouble because of this kind of stuff. Um, so I, I definitely understand it. I definitely understand where the, the senator is coming from. I have no idea how our government's going to handle it. Again, it's going to depend on their actual knowledge of how ga this is working in video games. And if they really deem it as something that's a bad thing... Again, I think the, the Senator's focus is that children are playing games like Fortnite and the like, and they're being tempted to gamble. And they feel that's what's, what should be illegal and be outlawed. Not that an adult who has, you know, I have my own bank account, my own credit card, my own responsibilities, and I should have the adult capacity to make an intelligent decision on if I should buy something or not in this, mo this, this microtransaction of a game... That's not, I think, who they care about. They're caring more about the kids who are being tempted into doing it or, or begging their parents to do it for them because, you know, the game is so throwing it out there in their face, okay? <clears throat> so, um, I guess, you know, we'll see what happens with this bill. So, anyway, thank you to the Anonymous Tipper. That was a pretty uh, interesting topic of discussion right there. Uh, soy is bad for you. Has subscribed for 17 months in a row. Thank you for the 17 months of support. Soy is bad for you. I appreciate it. Um, bright side Bob tipped me a dollar and twelve cents. It says, "What is the chat's obsession with frogs?" I don't get it. Uh, it really apparently doesn't have any bearing on anything. I guess at one point one day it, it was some kind of a, a weird on the spot meme. Uh, because it's not like I did anything with frogs, or, you know, any time in, the, in the, the near past or anything like that. Um, but apparently someone started doing a meme with frogs and it caught on, and I guess you know it pissed people off. So they complained, and the moderators ended up kind of moderating it. And since then, it's been a running joke, the frog meme. You know, I don't really get it. Um, <laughs> play, the plague of frogs meme. I don't, like I I've told you guys, I don't mind memeing. I don't mind memeing in my chat. I, I don't see the big deal. But if you make it so that the entire chat is derailed because of it, um, then that's not right. Like... It's one thing, okay, every once in a while we'll make a joke, we'll post up a few frog emotes. That's fine, I don't care about that. But the perfect example here is a couple weeks ago I was playing Phoenix Wright and really working my butt off narrating this part of the game with voices and everything. I tried to solve the mystery. I turned back to stream chat to see what's everyone's reaction to what's going on in the game and if they're liking my voices. And the entire stream chat was people spamming frogs. And that was the end of that because a lot of people ended up getting moderated then. But that's what I mean, like there has to be a limit, you know. It's within reason. Memes are fine. I don't care about the frogs. But if the entirety of my stream gets derailed because of these stupid frogs, um, then there's going to be a problem, you know? So everything in moderation. You guys know the rules. The rules are publicly listed below the stream on my Twitch page. You guys know about them, so give them a look. And, you know, you, for the most part, I have no complaints. You guys aren't out of control or anything. You know, I, I appreciate that. Um, that you guys come and hang out with me and don't go crazy and derail the stream. So thanks for that. Okay? All right. Uh, Alexander Rossi... Did a 50-bit cheer and says, PewDiePie gave you a shout-out to your tweet in a video he uploaded 15 minutes ago. Congrats. Well, thanks, Alexander. I'm sure it probably wasn't super positive. I'm sure it was some kind of a jab at me anyway because that's how he is. Um, but it is what it is. Uh, you know, he's not the first and certainly won't be the last person to, uh, you know, reference stuff that happened on Twitter in the last couple days. And that's fine. But like I said... Uh, I'm not making my entire existence about this kind of drama crap. I don't want to. Uh, my streams are not about that, so it is what it is. Kekin has subscribed for 19 months and says MK11 lobbies today. That is correct, Kekin. Uh, good to see you. Uh, looking forward to facing you and others in the lobbies today. I, this this week in particular, I played with Sub Zero, and I was completely correct in my estimations last week talking about that Sub Zero is quite good. I mean, he's got a high-low mix-up game that's great. He's got high combo ability um, and a really good punish game as well with his slide. So he's got a lot of things working in his favor in this game. So, all right. Hodor Targ cheered. 
He says, you should print, pin up your pro tip tweets. This kind of shit needs to come out. This kind of shit needs to be exposed for what it is. Real talk and good. Uh, a shout out to Ethical Ian Miles for giving you exposure. I, um, all right. Great. I don't, I don't even know what he's talking about in that regard. But, um, you know, I had a tweet po pinned for about a day and now it's not. Because now I'm going back to normal. Now it's going to be my schedules that are going to be pinned up. And that's all I really care about. So there you go. Eternal Napalm cheered. <clears throat> and he says, um... Thanks for always keeping it positive and focusing on good content, not being negative and filled with drama like so many others are. Any smaller, less hyped games coming out that you are excited to play? Well, there's this one game coming out this week that I, I some people have told me about, and I actually saw a trailer for it on YouTube. And I can't make I can't I can't figure out what this game is. It's called A Plague Tale, and I guess it's supposed to be about I don't know if it's a mother and her son or daughter or it's basically a a, a, a a younger woman and then this kid. And apparently it looks like they're like in London or something or somewhere in Europe, in like gothic Europe, and there's a plague going through killing so all these people. And rats, these giant infestations of rats are spreading the plague throughout Europe, okay? Oh, it's a sister and brother? Okay, thank you, Pepsi Pippin. I had no idea. Um, And it's so weird because I have no idea what this game is. At one point it shows like puzzle gameplay, but then it shows, like, kind of survival horror gameplay where there's enemies like knights and shit coming at you and there's no way you could fight them. But instead you have to find ways to manipulate the environment to kill them. Like, oh, do something to attract rats to them and they'll eat them alive and shit like that. So I'm looking at this trailer. I'm like, it looks interesting, but at the same time, it could be one of those games that, like, is so weird that it's not very good. And I hate to say it, but I'm kind of... It's a throwback to, like... I'm thinking of a game like Amy. Um, you know what I mean? Um, where that game really had no idea what it was. At some points it was sneaking. At some points it was, you know, puzzles. And I'm kind of thinking, what did the game end up being like that? You know? Um, so the bottom line is that I don't think, I don't know if I'm going to be playing it. I mean, I, I'll be very honest with everyone. I have no money right now. Like, I'm not even exaggerating. I have, all the money you guys have been tipping me goes right to bills. So... I'm going to basically have this game coming up, Rage 2. I'm going to basically have to charge to a charge card, which I don't want to do. But I'm going to have to because I don't have money for it. All your money is going to pay bills that need to be paid. So I don't even have enough money this week to buy this game, even if I wanted to. Just being very honest and transparent with all of you. I don't, I don't have money for it. Um, but what we'll do this week is we'll play things by ear. Let's see how this week goes. Let's see how Rage 2 is. Hopefully it's good. Let's continue on with Days Gone and Mortal Kombat and my chill streams. Let's see how the week goes. If I end up wrapping up Days Gone, you know, by, say, the end of this week, and now it's only Rage 2 and Mortal Kombat 11 that I'm playing, maybe we'll consider throwing in another game if I can afford it. We'll see. Um, you know what I mean? We'll see. Let's see what happens over the course of this week. It's going to depend on a lot of factors. Contributions, uh, how the games are go this week, etc. That's going to determine what I play. So, we'll see. Uh, how this week goes and go from there. I mean, this Plague Tale game seems interesting to me because it's more of like an oddity. Like, what is it? I don't even know what the hell the game is to even make an estimation of is it worth playing, right? But uh, sadly, I'm not in a position where I used to be where I could just, okay, I'll just buy it anyway. I, I can't do that. I have to, you know, kind of wait and see, so. All right. Um, Cajun0816 has subscribed to the channel. Thank you, Cajun, for the subscription. I appreciate that very much. Um... Super Dol Golf, or Super Dol Golf, or Super Dol Golf, however you pronounce this, because they, people make fun of me and say I pronounce these wrong. Timmy a dollar says, you have to remember, all bills have to go through the Senate Majority Leader to get a vote. You really think Mitch McConnell knows what a loot box even is? Of course not, but that's what I mean. Like, it's, <laughs> it's so weird, our government, because you're right, you got these old staunchy people up there who are like, you know, they don't even fucking understand what a video game is. Yet somehow, they're going to regulate them. You know what I mean? Like, huh? So, who knows what on earth is going to happen um, in regards to this bill. There's no way we can even predict. We just have to kind of keep an eye on it and see what happens. So, um, All right, Kill Bill 216 cheered and said, With games being such a grind at times, do you agree with the fact that some people try to exploit or glitch, glitch multiplayer games? For example, duplicating money in GTA Online. Well, see here and here you go. Here we go again. Um, it depends on the game, I guess. So allow me to explain. First of all, I don't believe that that 
exploiting a glitch or finding a way to to exploit an, an online competitive game is ever okay. Ever. Okay? I think that's bad. You should never, if it's a competitive game, there should be a set ground rules and a set situation. This is how you play it. Because, you know, competition is on the line. Results of a comp competitive nature could be on the line. Rewards with money and tournament winnings could be on the line as a basis of gameplay. And so, no, exploits and glitching competitive games should never be allowed. All right? That's just, I should get that right off the table. Now, when you're coming to single-player games... I mean, there's an entire community of people, you know, content creators slash, you know, people who like this stuff, finding these kind of things. So, for example, a Dark Souls speedrun where you glitch through a wall and skip half the game, which is, you know, I've seen them on on YouTube. I'm like, what the fuck is that? You found a way. You got fused to the wall and rolled through it, and now you're in a weird area floating around the, the map, and the next thing you know, you pop out the other side, and you're near the end of the game, right? Um, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Especially because it's not competitive. You see what I mean? Like, how is it's not competitive as a single-player game? Even though people, don't get me wrong, people like to make these kind of games competitive and say, oh, I beat it in this amount of time, and I beat it with my bare fists and no armor on my body, and I infested myself with crabs so that my crotch itched the whole time, and also I had one eye taped closed, and I was sitting on a cactus, and I beat the game in five minutes. You know, people will make, do these crazy-ass runs. Um, and make a competition out of it. But at its core, at what its focus, its 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 main focal design, these single player games are not meant to be competitive. Okay, so you know that being said, um, I don't think it's a big deal in games like that. Okay, now when you're talking about games that have microtransactions, and when you're talking about games that are paid to win, someone who you know games that system to win. I, I can see two schools of thought. You could see one people saying, well, this is bullshit. I use my own hard-earned money to buy the in-game currency so I could buy these cool items on my character that I earned to... You know, I, I paid for that, and therefore no one else should be getting it for free. Uh, that's bullshit, okay? So that's one mentality. The other mentality is kind of like the whole uh, Guy Fox slash Robin Hood kind of mentality where anything you could do to stick it to the, to the company, stick it to the corporation, stick it to the man, anything you can do, you should... Um, I guess almost kind of like the old school hacker mentality. If you can, if you can pirate something, you should do it just for the sake of doing it, right? Um, and so there's people who are in that men that boat, that mentality that, well, if I can totally cheat the system to find a way to get ahead, I should just do it, right? Um, it's it's a tough it's a tough call to say what's right and what's wrong, especially if if it comes down to morality, like. I would never, ever cheat to get ahead in my entire life versus, oh, well, I would cheat to get ahead if it's a situation where someone had cheated me or had an unfair situation, so it's only fair I kind of get my comeuppance or I get my, uh, you know, I get I I get some revenge for basically being cheated myself, you know. I don't know. I, it's, a tough, it's a tough question to answer, Kill Bill, because I guess it's situational. All right. Um... I'll give you an example. I'll actually give you an example. There was a couple years ago that I was playing a mobile game, of all things, a mobile game. And they screwed the game up where the way that the game worked is that there was a campaign you could play. And when you play the campaign, every time you beat a stage, you earn rewards. You earn, like, in-game currency, experience points, and things you would use to, like, level up your characters and the like. But you'd only get it once. If you replayed that same stage, you wouldn't get it the second time. You only would get these rewards once. Well, they screwed the game up. And reset the whole thing by accident. So people realized this and they didn't, you know, oh shit. And they spent like two days straight just replaying the game from start to finish. Re-earning all the rewards, which is incredible. I mean, you could earn an incredible amount of in-game currency and and rewards by replaying the campaign of the game over a second time. Um, and then they realized it and they patched it out. But it was too late because some people had already gotten all these rewards and spent them. So you had a large group of people who figured this, this glitch out and went through and had an unfair advantage against other people who had legitimately just played the game at face value and didn't know there was this glitch exploit. Okay. Um, so yeah, you know, I, I I can see both schools. I see both sides of it. Um, I don't necessarily think there's a, a, a black and white yes or no answer to this question. I think it's, a, it's based on, number one, your own personal beliefs and feelings. You know, there's some people that are staunchly, you should never cheat to get ahead, ever. 
And there are some people that say, well, it's situational. You should only use this cheat or exploit if it's a situation where you feel like you're getting back at a company that was unfair to you. And then there's people who are just like, fuck it. I just cheat to get ahead whenever I can in life, right? <laughs> so it all depends, you know. And again, situational as well. Um, you know, is this really, who is this hurting by doing it? Is Does it hurt anyone? You know what I mean? I don't know. Yeah. Again, I don't want to say definitively because this is not, we don't. We're not looking at a specific situation. Like you referenced GTA Online, I honestly don't didn't play GTA Online past the first couple of weeks, so I couldn't even attest and say, "Oh yeah, well that's definitely bad or good." I have no idea how that system works. I don't know how much of a grind the game is. I don't know how fair or unfair Rockstar is with the, with that stuff. Um, I don't even know what you do with the currency in the game, what you spend it on. I have no idea, so I cannot answer that. Um, you know, in that regard. Kill Bill now just did a follow-up. He says, can we just agree that microtransactions have ruined games? I wouldn't say this. Hold on. All right. We'll, we'll end the, the, this microtransaction discussion with this, okay? I don't think that microtransactions have ruined games. What I think is that we've seen a management and culture shift in game development, okay? That people who are in charge of these companies, sadly have now looked at the industry and said, oh man, the days of milk and honey are over. Because back in the day, we're talking the 90s and the 2000s, okay? As long as you were working for a big AAA studio, you could pump out any big AAA game and that game would sell. It was very rare that a big studio like Capcom or Sega or EA, you know, or you know, Square Enix would put out a major AAA release that they promoted and it wouldn't sell. It was very, very rare, okay? So you would put time and money and effort in developing a game for a while. It would come out. It would sell. You made your money. You're good. Today, number one, video games have grown so huge that the market is oversaturated. You have so many game companies putting out games at the same time that you've got years when you've got three different game companies putting out similar or the same game, right? I mean, look at Days Gone. The game on its face value actually isn't bad, but you say, well, man, well, Days Gone really feels like State of Decay, plus The Last of Us, plus... The so, see what I mean? If this were the 90s or the 2000s, there wouldn't have been five other games similar, so the one game that came out that was a zombie survival game would have been popular. But today, we're oversaturated. So these companies aren't making the profit margins they used to, and what they're now trying to find is a way to make more money in the long run. So if I can release my game, and it's not a huge seller at launch, I can sell you a DLC pack... That's going to fucking be a bunch of money down the road because it's a season pass and you lock into it. I can do microtransactions to make customizable things in the game that look cool and make you feel like you're, oh man, you're really elite now because you got that better gun skin or you got that, you know, that better outfit or whatever, that new character that you've unlocked. Um, as we've said, these, uh, these game developer bigwigs are now looking not as games as a transaction, but games as a service. They don't see that big AAA release as, I sell a good game and you buy it and that's a, that's a, a transaction. They see it as, I'm selling you on an ongoing service and revenue stream for us that's going to pour dollars in over a course of years. And that's not good. Because essentially what ends up happening, as we've seen, is that because they're now considering, oh, we're going to make money over time rather than at the point of sale, the point of sale transaction sells you an inferior product. You get a game that's buggy, you get a game that's underwhelming, you get a game that doesn't even run properly, you get a game that maybe doesn't have the features that were promised, and but all with the promise of, well, over time we'll nickel and dime you for microtransactions, but we'll use that money to fix the game. That's not good, okay? That's not good at all. Um... It has, in a lot of ways, hurt the industry in a huge way. Um, I mean, you take a look at the, the best games that we've had over the past few years. Games like Red Dead Redemption 2, God of War, um, Resident Evil 2 Remake, okay? Just, just, that, just, just take those three games. Out of all those games, which games had nickel and dime microtransactions? God of War had zero. Um, Red Dead Redemption 2 only had them in the online component. I think Resident Evil 2 only had maybe a couple skins, if you really think about it. Um, and those games were ginormously you know, popular, huge sellers, okay? Really, it made tons of money for the, their respective companies. And, uh, you know, those are, the best, those are the ones that stand out in our minds. But, how many other games came out that were these microtransaction generators that 
are kind of games that, yeah, you'll play them for a little bit or you'll talk about them for a little bit, but in all reality, either you could just completely skip them and you've missed absolutely nothing in, in, the, in the, the landscape of gaming, or you only know, you go into those games understanding you're only going to be playing them for a very limited period of time before you drop them and you move on to best stuff. You know what I mean? Um, so there you go. Like, for me, it has... has have big games and good games changed because of microtransactions? No, it's not like God of War came out and the whole game was microtransactions. You see what I mean? But at the same time, I understand what you're saying. We are seeing so many games now that this is their focus, is release a broken game, release an unfinished game with the hopes that we patch it later on and we use microtransactions to fund ongoing revenue streams. I don't agree with that. You know, you have to put out the good game first and then if people are hooked on your good game, then over time... Maybe you can make some additional money, but what they're doing now with these games is just ridiculous. Um, and, you know, the best way, the absolute best way um, that you can do this stuff without... It, it, well, basically, would be just not to buy those games. When you see a game that you know is going to be rife with microtransactions and you don't support this practice in the industry, don't buy that game, don't support that game. Don't buy into the hype. That this is a new game and it's hype and you got to play it. Don't fall for the marketing. Even if all your friends want to play it, don't buy into it. You know, there's been many games in the past couple of years that I've skipped out. That I felt that this was kind of the deal. And I don't really feel like I missed much at all. You know, I don't. It's a, in the past two, three years that I've skipped a, t a ton of games. Which was very uncharacteristic for me because I used to be the guy who plays every game. I don't think there's been a single game that I've skipped that people have said, Man, Phil, you really missed out this time. Because you skipped that game. I it never. So. <laughs> so there you go. Okay. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you for your contributions here on pre-stream. I appreciate it. Um, open lobby will be going into effect in just a couple of minutes. What we're going to do here, I'm going to end the pre-stream. Then I'm going to get into a party with Brian and Kekin. We're going to set up the lobby. Kekin is going to be taking, you know, uh, people in. He's going to be asking who wants to play. I know Ratcha fan wants to play. He had already said he wanted to play, so we could definitely get Ratcha fan in there. Outside of that, I'm not sure who else is over here ready to play Mortal Kombat 11 with us today. But let's see. All right, we're gonna have a fun lobby here. Like I said, more than likely, maybe an hour per group. So maybe the first hour we play with one group, then we we alternate to the second group, then we take a break, and then we come back and we have a third group or something like that. I think that would work out pretty well. Um, you know, and then we go from there. All right, guys. So that is it for the pre-stream. Thanks to everyone who contributed. Again, just a quick reminder. The best way you can help me today is by tipping me. I appreciate anyone who does. Um, I really do need the help right now. The next week is going to be incredibly bad for me, but hopefully things will get better. Uh, so tipping, if you can. Um, and that's that. All right, guys. Let's end.